So as I said, uh, there are two types of descending tracks. You have the primal tract and then you have the extra primal tracks. And uh, so the objective of this video is uh, to describe some of the cores and functions of the descending tracks. Uh, but predominantly it's going to be an assignment for you. Uh, so I'm just going to list out the names and some details. Uh, so extra primal tracks are the rubrospinal tract which arises from the red nucleus. And then you have the vestibulospinal tract which uh, arises from the vestibular vestibular nuclei, the four vestibular nuclei, and they are lateral and medial vestibular spinal tract, and reticular spinal tract, uh, which arises from the pontine and medullary reticular formation, and then you have the tectospinal tract, which arises from the tectum or the superior colliculus. So describing the functions of these tract, uh, I am going to do by describing other things. Anyway, you have an assignment on this. But anyway, let's uh, look at some of the functions of this tract by look at where they act. For that, I am going to discuss tone and the control of tone. So if you take a muscle and if you just press it, uh, what the consistency you, you feel is not like water. It's not like a rock. It's not really hard. And it's not like very, very soft like water. You can't just hold through. So the, there is actually some a state of partial contraction in happening in muscles. So that is state of partial contraction is known as tone. So how does this tone occur and how is it controlled? So what happens with tone is that um, the gamma motor neurons are having a discharge that is going on continuously called the gamma motor discharge. And that is, I, if you remember, I talked about the gamma loop by which if you pull the muscle spindles, um, you can actually cause the lower motor neurons to contract. So this gamma loop is being used to cause some contraction. So let's look at the gamma discharge and how it causes tone. The first thing is the control of the gamma discharge. And that itself is the control of tone. So you can see that uh, the different parts of the brain that are involved in the this gamma discharges, uh, you can see that different parts are inhibitory. You can see that motor cortex is inhibitory to gamma discharge, and basal ganglia is inhibitory to gamma discharge, cerebellum is inhibitory to gamma discharge, the medullary reticular formation, which forms the medullary reticular spinal tract. And actually, the the motor cortex is acting through the the basal ganglia, and even the cerebellum is all acting through the medullary reticular formation. All these things are actually inhibitory to the gamma motor discharge. And you can see that the pontine reticular formation and vestibular nuclei. So pontine reticular formation forms the pontine. Uh, this is the pontine pontine reticular spinal tract close spinal tract and vestibular nuclei which forms the vestibular spinal tract are actually facilitatory to gamma motor discharge so so and so many things are inhibitory and and they act through the medullary reticular formation and the medullary reticular spinal tract and why pontine reticular formation is is facilitatory and this pontine reticular formation is tonically active Tonically active means that is they are continuously active. Tonically active. So pontine reticular formation is tonically active, so they're continuously active. Meanwhile, medullary reticular formation is not continuously active. It needs the cortex and basal ganglia to activate it, cerebellum to activate it. Then only it will act. So let us look at some detail about that. So if you if you so let us look, see how tone occurs, and how tone evolves. And uh, so basically the cortex and cerebellum will stimulate the uh, medullary reticular formation. And that will inhibit the gamma motor discharge. Meanwhile, pontine reticular formation will facilitate the gamma motor discharge. So, and what happens is that when the pontine reticular formation stimulates the, the gamma motor discharge, so those fibers will come down and supply all the gamma motor neurons in the anterior horn and the gamma motor neurons will produce uh, action potentials and those action potentials 
as if you remember the gamma motor neuron supply the contractile elements on either end of the muscle spindle so the muscle spindle either end you have contact elements and the gamma motor neurons were supplying the contact elements so what happens is that when there is a gamma motor discharge that means when there is a stimulation of all the gamma motor neurons what it will do is it will stretch the muscle spindle so it stretches the muscle spindle and that will, will initiate fire, um, fire. when the spindle is stretched it will initiate signals in the 1a fibers and that will go to the alpha motor neuron or the lower motor neuron and that will activate the lower motor neuron and finally uh, you will um, that will lead to a partial contraction of muscle and this is tone so tone occurs due to the gamma motor discharge and so here you can see the medullary reticulospinal tract and here you can see the pontine reticulospinal tract and they are rolled in this so pontine is facilitatory also vestibulospinal tract is also facilitatory and but these are more important and we will come to discuss these concepts later when we discuss human lesion and decortical and decerebrate rigidity so this is how tone is controlled so this is also a very important question for uh, Kohas exams and so you can understand some of the roles of the reticulospondine and medullary reticulospinal tract.